Alas, the sad tale of Mega Zero, taken from us in the prime of his life, consigned to an early watery grave at the hands of a distracted crane operator. That, my friends, simply won't do. I've been talking to people, contacts I thought I'd walked away from for good. I told them I was only after one thing, the thing that was taken from me, from us, Mega Zero. Our Mega Zero. And, oh, what they found. Buried beneath a long destroyed and long forgotten warehouse in a not so forgotten country. One shredded cardboard crate containing one toy from one specific toy lines, production run in one alternate international market. The story may be true, it may be false, it may lie somewhere in between, and it cost me a great deal to discover one way or another, but the spoils, my friend. are ours to behold. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and no distracted crane operator can get in the way of the retro-future force known as Mega Zero. Not when he can come from Korea. This box is completely untarnished, touched by a rainbow, and showing some fresh retro art of both the Glacial Lord and one of his legendary battles. Whoever this sono Kongaful extension of fans project is, they even delivered sticker placement instructions with their fully unstickered toy. It speaks to two memories I have of Transformers collecting. Filling in my G1 shelf with figures from foreign releases like the European gold boxes, and dipping into the not so knockoff Korean releases, often coming out years later, to catch up on Brave, Beast Wars 2, slash Neo, car robots, and other Japanese pieces. Dubbed Mega Zero in the instructions, this beast is a mechanical Megaloceros, or Irish elk. Somewhere a G-Wolf's ears must be perking. Mega Zero's sculpt appends sleek curves around the boxy core of its body, getting across the silhouette of its base biology extremely well, especially that majestic neck-to-breast slope. Mega Zero also has kingly antlers, cut from robotic ridges and crisp as hell to behold. I also dig that they're the main yellow piece among the otherwise grey and burgundy electro-elk physique. The carryover color scheme in the Glacial Bots is pretty obvious by now, and it's a palette that tastes topical and on the mark. As far as posability, the head can look up! The legs can also splay a little if that's something you're into, but the Mega Zero is secretly the most posable Glacial Limb Beast of them all, with his ball-jointed antlers! This is tremendously emotive, allowing for shows of perkiness, attentiveness, sadness, or straight-up antler flappiness. I'm really glad these pieces were left so open source for posing. It really lets one craft the elkly image of the Mega Zero to one's own tastes. Mega Zero himself comes on a suitably Korean microcard and is primarily cast in the cold yellow and gray of his majestic companion. This guy's got the largest optic sunglasses of all his compadres, and while his posability is identical to the other mini glacial bots, his hips are way tighter and clicky. Almost scarily so. Thanks to another one of those sliding panels, Mega Zero can also beast ride his Irish elk, and thanks to its broad and tall neck, he looks pretty boss while doing so. To engage in robotized fusion, Mega Zero's body extends like a G1 limb before all four of his legs peel back to reveal its bipedal form. After removing the elk head and folding its powerful throat away, Mega Zero slams into place to complete his personal combination. The Mega Zero head then unites its antlers to become a fairly badass chopping sword, which kinda always sits at an odd angle for that aforementioned chopping. With minimal animal parts hanging off the sides, a smooth integration of the core minibot, and that strange tall backpack behind his head, Mega Zero's robotized fusion mode has somehow become my favorite of the four limb bots. I think I'm also really won over by his primarily arctic gray color scheme. He looks like a cool guy swordsman with ruby red aviators. As I mentioned earlier, his sword never really sits perfectly parallel as easily as it does perpendicular, but his arms only really bend at the elbows, so maybe it's not that big a deal. You can also use the transformation joints to get some inward-outward face-swatting motion, though that also means an elk leg swings in and out of his shoulder. 
Something undocumented is the fact that with the Mega Zero head stored on his back, Mega Zero can have a Mega Antler Mega Jetpack! Sadly, this also causes him to topple backwards a lot, as his curvy heels have a lot of trouble with gravity when they aren't counterweighted by him wielding his sword. Though, ironically enough, storing the head in sword form on his back affords a sort of third-leg tripod deal to alleviate that. Mega Zero lets loose with one last fairly interesting thing as he becomes an arm for the Glacial Lord. Mega Zero's neck assembly slides down entirely to provide a tighter shoulder silhouette. I dig it. Sadly, the sliding mono leg means Tail Club remains the most articulate arm. And I got a feeling chances are low of that changing. Also, as with his comrades, swiveling and compressing Mega Zero's arm mode results in a leg mode that can totally stick onto a foot. Antler blade knee pad action go! Due to all his quirky unique features, like his sorta slim Mega Zero mode with ball jointed antlers, his cleaner robot mode, and his sword slash jetpack, Mega Zero has become my favorite glacial bot of the whole team. He's a legit fun little retro style toy that you can just mode swap and modify over and over on your desktop. As for the Korean angle on the until now predictable pattern of Retro Futures packaging homages, well, I'm not sure how many more of these Korean Mega Zeros lay within that mysterious shipping crate, let alone the size of the production run or if other Korean copies of the Glacial Bots even exist. I tapped a lot of connections to find this solitary Mega Zero, and who knows if more Korean ones will even make their way onto the open market. Whatever the case, it does bring me back to my early collector days of European Stunticons and Sonicong Brave Toys, which is an interesting bookend to all the G1 Transformers nostalgia Retro Futures kindled in my heart. That said, I extend a warm hand and a soft hug to those who may be totally unable to deal with the idea of having to scour the planet and place a completely different packaging type into their Glacial Bot shelf space. I'm smiling, but hugging. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I'm halfway through talking about the Glacial Bots. With many things in life, I usually give up and lie down halfway through a given task, but there's a woolly rhino with a drill against my neck that's convincing me to try a new, vaguely diligent approach.